a teacher here at Lincoln College and we're going to learn the proper way to do a blood pressure. So let me give you some ideas first of um, the proper techniques to take a blood pressure. Um, on our sphygmomanometer, we've got our, um, our dial, um, which are always in um, two millimeters of mercury. Um, and reading the blood pressure cuff, it's oh, you'll pump it up um, after you get a peak obtained. Um, so 180, 178, 176, 174, 172, 170, these are by 10s, and then these would be by 20s. And each one of these little lines would go um, by 2 um, millimeters of mercury, okay? So again, if you pump it up to 160, it's going to go 158, 156, 154, 152, 150, 148, 146, 144, 142, 140. All right, and that's exactly how we do that. Um, when we do this, we're going to obtain and oscillate using the stethoscope um, on your patient. So what you're going to do is feel for the brachial pulse, and you're going to set your stethoscope over it, not putting your thumb directly on the diaphragm here. Um, hold down here. Not putting your finger directly over the bell just like this, because you'll hear sounds um, from your thumb. So you want to actually take your fingers and lie flat against the brachial artery. All right? What you're going to hear as you pump up is the Kirchhoff sounds. Um, and it's got to stay consistent. So let's say you pump up to 140, and you let your needle fall. You're going to quiet, 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 and all of a sudden you're going to hear ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. You heard nothing, and it keeps continuing to fall, and then ba-boom, 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 ba-boom. It's a consistent. The Kirchhoff sounds are completely consistent, so you know that is an accurate blood pressure. And just some notes to take here. Um, when Before obtaining a blood pressure, you want to um, identify your patient, date of birth. Um, you also want to get a baseline blood pressure, like on a peak, so um, and we'll... Um, show you how to do that as well. But what you do is feel for the radio pulse. With the cuff on, you're going to pump it up till you cannot feel that radio pulse anymore and add 30 to that number. This gives you a baseline of how high to pump when you're obtaining a blood pressure on a new patient. Um, and just so you know, um, you're going to assess for any kind of contraindications on your patient. Um, taking a blood pressure on them. Do not do their arm, and these are actually cost safety risks as well. If they have implants, um, dialysis access on that arm, uh, radi um, real um, mastectomy, um, even the CVA um, stroke patients, you absolutely don't want to do it on that side of the arm. Uh, lip node removal. So just some things to think about where you want to go to the opposite arm, okay? The correct cuff size is extremely important when you're obtaining a blood pressure on a person. If the cuff is too big on a patient, the blood pressure tends to be lower. If the blood pressure is too small on your patient, the blood pressure tends to be higher. So the fitting, fitting cuff is extremely important for your patient. When you wrap a patient in their cuff, and we'll give you, um, you know, we'll show you how to do that as well. 20% of the cuff size should be able to stick out, and you should be able to put two fingers into the cuff, and that is a proper fit. Um, have your patient sit, arm at heart level, and feet should be on the cross and flat on the ground. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have one of our medical assistants go grab a patient out of the um, waiting room and bring her into the office and obtain a blood pressure the proper way. So that it. About two inches above the anticubical area. And she's got 20% of the cuff left over. So that is the proper fit for this patient. Okay. I'm going to let me take a pick first. So at this point, she's feeling for the radial pulse. 
and pumping and seeing when she stops feeling this radio pulse. She's going to add 30 to that number and has a number to be able to pump her. So what was the, the peak? I got 100, so I'm at 30, so 130. Okay, so she got her 100, she's going to add the 30, she knows to pump this patient up to 130. She's tapping on her stethoscope, feeling for the brachial pulse. Perfect. She knows not to put her thumb on this bell because she will hear um, sounds that aren't part of the blood pressure. So 122 over 84. 122 over 84, and that is your patient's blood pressure. Thank you so much. And hopefully this helps all with blood pressures. Thank you.